Okay, so we're going to look at um, changing from standard to vertex form. So right now this is in standard form, and actually we'll just do a quick overview of, of the two. Um, your standard form is written as f at x, uh, which is this function notation, uh, is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And what the question is asking you is to take that form and change it into a bracket x minus h squared um, plus k. And the reason you would do that is just, it's far easier to, to make a graph of this, to graph it by hand, mm -hmm. than to draft something in standard form. And it also gives us information about what the vertex is, okay? Um, so we're going to do this one. This is actually a relatively difficult question because we have a fraction involved in it. So I'll rewrite it down here below. Um, the first method we'll do, we've also written these two formulas here. Technically, you can use these two formulas to find... Um, you can just plug in the A and B from your standard form here. So I can even color label them, right? That's your A. That's the A there. There's the B. The, that's a really bad B, Drew. And the C. And you can technically use these, plug the values of A, B, C, so like a half, negative 6, and positive 26. Plug them all in here, get your H and K. Technically, your A is the same, and you can build it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like, in your case, your teacher wants you to do completing the square. So you can just keep these in mind as, like, ways to check. You should get the same answer by completing the square and doing this. So we can use these as, as checking mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, so to complete the square, your very first step is to get, actually, the first two terms and divide them by the A value. So the very first two terms here are the half x squared. Oh, this is really dark. I wish that was more transparent. Um, x squared minus 6x. We're going to divide both of them. Um, the idea is you're common factoring out. There you go. I divide this by a half and this by a half. Um, and you're common factoring out that term. Okay. So in other words, you're just taking the a term, bringing it outside the brackets, and then figuring out what's left. So we'd end up at f at x is equal to 1 half. And then in a set of brackets, we have a half divided by a half is the concept of 1, so we have x squared. And then negative 6 divided by half is actually the same as multiplying 6 by 2. So you actually end up with negative 12x. Okay? If you took a calculator, you'd end up with the same thing. Okay? Plus 26. So we've, we've started that part. The next thing we're going to do is this is now a really important term for completing the square. They call it like the new b value. I could even call it bn. Okay? And there's a little formula. You take bn, you divide it by 2, and you square it. And that's the two values that you're going to both add and subtract into the brackets. Okay, So on the side, if I were to take negative 12 and divide it by 2 and square it, well, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6, and negative 6 squared is 36. So we are going to both add and subtract 36 within our bracket here. Okay, so I'll rewrite the next line. f at x is equal to, we still have that half, I should write an equal sign there, x squared minus 12x, but now we're going to both add 36 and subtract 36 inside the bracket. And the reason we can do that is because... Oh, inside the bracket? Yeah, inside the bracket, technically. The reason we can do that is because if you add 36 and then subtract it, you're adding zero. So you're not actually changing anything in this side of the equation. Because normally, if you do something to one side, you should have done it to the other. But what we did is we added a zero here. Well, if I add a zero here, nothing changes. Um, the other purpose to this is we're making a really specific perfect square trinomial. So we're going to take this um, negative value here. And in our next step, we're going to bring it outside the brackets. But in order to do that, we have to multiply by that common factor. So we have to take that negative 36 and we have to multiply it by a half. So I'll zoom out a little again. I'm going to kind of shift our equation over a little. So we get f at x is equal to 1 half x squared minus 12x plus 36. Um, when you multiply by a half, it's the same as dividing by 2. So you're actually going to get 18. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, And because it's, it's a negative 36 times positive uh, half. So it'll be positive then? Uh, it'll be negative 18 when it comes out because it's a negative times a positive. So when it comes outside the brackets, it becomes negative 18. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Essentially what I, I did... I'd expect it to be like positive 18, but like that makes... Well, what it is is think of it, that's negative 36 times a half 
Um, and anytime we have a negative times a positive, we know our answer is going to be negative. And then 36 times a half is actually just 18. So we have negative 18 that comes okay. in. Okay. Okay. It's possible that the A value here could have been negative. And if it was a negative times a negative, it would have been a positive. But the... Um, the integer, whether it's positive or negative, is actually really important in this step, okay? And then finally, we, we can't leave out the very last number there, that positive 26. We're going to combine those two after. Now, another reason we did this perfect square trinomial is because instead of actually having to factor it, this is going to factor into two brackets that are the exact same. That's the whole reason we did this, um, that little bn value, that... Um, uh, you know how we divided by 2 and squared it. We made a really specific thing. And the, the way you can figure this one out is you're going to take the square root of the first and the last term. So in this case, square root of x squared. Um, I'll do it on the side. So square root of x squared is just x. So that's the first term in the bracket. Square root of 36 is 6. That's the second term in the bracket. And whatever the um, integer or the positive or negative, the operation in front of the b value, that's the operation we bring down. So it's a negative. Okay, so because that was negative, this becomes x minus 6 squared. And then finally, we've got to combine those two. Uh, that's going to be 8. So we get positive 8. So the uh, vertex form is f at x equals 1 half x minus 6 plus 8. Now, at the very beginning, I said we could use these to figure it out. Um, let's double check some stuff here. First of all, the a value is a half. Our a value is a half. Okay, I'm going to write it. Out one more time, remember this is a, this is technically the h value, and this is the k value. Okay, so that's our k, and that's our h there. So we're going to check with these things here. Our h value is equal to negative, um, the b here is negative 6, so it's actually negative negative 6 over 2, and our a value was a half, so 2 times a half. So I'll quickly do this here. Negative of an, a negative, so it's a negative times a negative, becomes positive. Okay? And 2 times a half is actually just 1. So we get 6. And if you look at this bracket here, remember this is always a negative, so our h value is 6. Okay? Um, that's like saying the vertex is 6. If, if the number were to be a negative, would you make that positive? You would have made that positive. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay? Um, and for our k to check, k is equal to... Our c value, which is here, is 26. Subtract. Our b was negative 6 squared divided by 4 times a was a half. So we've got to do a lot of little operations here. Negative 6 squared is 36. Okay, so I'm going to still have 26 minus 36. I'm working on the fraction right now. So it's minus 36, and then 4 times a half is 2. 36 divided by 2 we know is 18. Okay. So we have 26 minus 18, and 26 minus 18 is the value of 8, and that's what we got for our k value. Okay, so you can use those as checks. Technically, you can build the entire vertex form of the equation. You just, like, plot them in instead of the process, but that's two ways you can go from your standard to your vertex form. Okay. okay. Is it going to do this example?